I think <laughs> <laughs> we don't we're using different cameras today so I have no idea if this is working or not um so let us know because the other cameras we would use would have a little dot that shows us that we are so yeah um, our new software says we're live so <laughs> if you can see us and hear us yeah hopefully hopefully it's working because we have no idea <laughs> oh it's working i just checked on youtube and it shows we're going so hey, check that out well it hopefully y'all hear us too <laughs> yes can everyone hear us um after this we should just trust that it works but bear with us on this <laughs> amy can see us now whether or not she can hear us is a whole other story <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so anyway, um, we have a lot to do and talk about today. So um, I'm going to be showing Soya's roll-up pencil pouch. This is linked in the description of the video. Um, it is on their website, and it's a free pattern. It's a service project they are doing. So um, it, I think they're due March first. So if you want to make one, you'll have to make it and ship it pretty quickly. But I wanted to um, share it. I've made one already and I they're a really quick sew. It only takes two fat quarters, some elastic um, and some fusible interfacing. But they're really quick sew, really cute and therefore a good cause. So that is what I'm going to be sewing today. But I also have some other stuff, stuff to show you and stuff to talk about. Um, oh, good. So they can hear us. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. All that talking, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know for sure if anybody can hear me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to be sewing this up. And then we, of course, have some other stuff to show you and talk about. Um, so, let's just get started on the roll up pencil pouch. So, like I said, there's you only need two fat quarters. I have two set up here to sew um, just in case I get done with it as fast as I think I might. But sewing and talking is, is not as easy as it sometimes might seem. So who knows? But the first thing I'm going to do is attach the elastic four inches down on the top of one of these panels. And I think I'm going to attach it on the one that has the the fusible on it because it's a little more sturdy. So this is four inches wide, so I'm just going to use that. So I'm just going to measure four inches down and tack this in place. And let me know if you're going to think about making one of these little roll up pouches for either the service project or just for yourself. Cause I was thinking these might be actually be really nice to make for like, um, putting knitting needles in or crochet needles, um, colored pencils, if you like to color and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of things you could make these for. And I really like that fabric. Is that just one that you had lying around? <laughs> yeah. I was trying to find some because I thought like most of the fabric I have is honestly kind of like girly. It's florally and everything. So I thought this would be nice um, for a boy since I'm going to be sending them over to Soya tomorrow just to make sure they get them on time. So I'm just going to tack this in place. Not sew over my needles. I used to be really bad about sewing over. I would just sew over them all the time. And I was like, I don't know why people worry about that because I no, nothing ever happened to me by doing it. And then eventually my luck ran out and I broke one of my needles by sewing over one. So there definitely is a reason. So for materials, you need the two fat quarters and you cut them down to 10 and a half by 15 inches. And then you also need to cut from one of the fat quarters, um, your ties. And those are two inches by 15 inches. And I folded one end. It's not that end. I thought I folded one end in 
like a quarter of an inch so that it wouldn't have any raw edges on one side. And then I folded them in half, fold the raw, raw ed edges into that half and then folded it again. Um, it's really easy to do. I just did that extra step of folding in one of the sides a quarter inch so that that raw edge would be hidden and not fray so much. So I'm just gonna sew around this. I'm gonna put my stitch length up to about three. And actually, I think I'm gonna start at the other end. That's not the nice side. Did we, um, not did we, is, is there a link to the, the pattern? Yeah. yeah, it's the that one. Yep. Yeah, it's free on their site, but I think you're going to drop a link in there. Yes. Too. It's in the description of the video as well. Oh, it won't let me. It's too long. Oh, no. Um, uh, Why did it make it so long? I if you pulled it from their website, yeah. it probably won't be as long. I'm trying right now. Yeah, you have a cap on how much you can type in there. Yeah, it's so weird. You okay? Yeah, I just was being silly how I was pulling that off. Got it. Huh. Uh, no wine today. Um, Song with the Wayne. We're not big wine drinkers generally and we did it for valentine's day last week although i will say the wine that we had was very good so if we could find more of it i would definitely drink more um it was, it's been a long week already and it's wednesday so i definitely would enjoy a glass of wine right now but <laughs> we drank the last bottle so i saw sylvia thank you um oh and so to that point um we've had a lot of it looks really good. A lot of requests for um, trays, the quilting trays, and the um, seam ripper stiletto combos. So those are now back in stock and updated with pictures. So if you were waiting for a large tray or a small tray or a seam ripper stiletto, those are back in stock on our website. So I am just going to throw around the second tie and get that finished. Oh, that's, well, it's lucky that you had your glasses on, Laura. She said she accidentally sewed over a pin and it snapped. And oh no. If it weren't for her reading glasses, she would have been in some serious trouble. Oh no, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I guess I was really bold thinking that there was no issue with sewing over them. And just to speed things up, I would just sew over them not pull them out and yeah i broke a needle and it took me forever to find the other piece of it down under in the machine it actually wasn't on this machine but i stopped doing that after <laughs> after that happened they're just so thin that i guess i was really lucky and never actually hit one before but so um I will address something. So welcome, Stitch in Time. Oh, I like the way you spelled your name. That's really cool, Patty. Um, you're from Canada. So, um, and, and yes, I am going to mention the giveaway, Luane, but in a sort of roundabout way. Um, the quilting community generally is a very loving and fun community. Sometimes there are bad apples that frustrate me. Um, and last week after we made the announcement of our giveaway, someone thought it would be fun to go on someone else's live stream and complain about the fact that our um, giveaway was not eligible or was not available to people in other countries. So one, I found that very distasteful because one, you shouldn't be going to someone else's uh, live stream to complain about that because it's not fair to the other creator. Just one second. So the um, the two ties that I made, I'm just going to put them, layer them along the elastic and tack them in place so that they are secured there. Whenever I do that, I go over it a few times just to make sure they don't pull pull out, pull away. And so I'll get back to my story real quick. But one of the reasons we changed to a different video software was so that we could do something like this 
and show hopefully a better view of what is going on on the sewing machine. Yeah, so let us know if you like it. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, long story short, someone complained about our giveaway not being giveaway enough and did so on someone else's channel, which should never happen. Just very quickly, we love everyone that watches the show, regardless of whether they're in America or elsewhere. The issue is that for a giveaway of this nature, because of the values involved, there are 50 different states that all have different laws regarding giveaways. There's some states that, that require filings, like actual filings, saying that you're doing a giveaway and what the rules are. Um, there's like seven states that are very specific about it. Most of the other states, the other 43, are pretty easy. But uh, Canada, for instance, has a federal law, and then each of the provinces have their own laws on giveaways. So we just don't have the capacity to be able to review all of the laws in all of the countries and all the provinces. Australia is the same way. Each of the states in Australia has their own laws in addition to the federal laws. Um, it's not that we don't love you guys or that we don't want to have you a part of it. It's that we legally just can't afford to spend money on all of the legal fees that would be associated with making sure that any giveaway we give away, a lot of words, um, is compliant in every country. So it's not because we have something against anyone else. It's simply because we just can't afford the legal fees or the time that is required to do that. So. I apologize if you're in a country other than America and you would like to win a giveaway. I understand that. It's just not something that we have a um, we have the ability to do. So, um, but to that point, if you don't know already, we have <laughs> a uh, our store, uh, our Shopify store, where we sell the slide lock and everything else. We'll be celebrating its one year anniversary in May. So. We are giving away a brand new, unused, in the box. It's actually downstairs in the box. Um, Juki TL18 QVP. It's a glorious machine. Um, we have a couple Jukis, and we love them all. And uh, we called up Soya, because that's who we bought all of our Jukis from. And they graciously offered to give us one for free to give away. So we're very appreciative of the Soya brothers and sister um to provide us with that um you can enter to win the juki tl18 by making any purchase from our store between uh last week i don't remember last wednesday and may 19th i believe um the official rules are in the description but if you make any purchase between last week and may 19th you're automatically entered you don't have to do anything else if you don't want to buy anything, totally fine as well. There uh, is a link in the description of the video that tells you how you can enter. Um, and we will do the drawing live. Well, we'll, we'll we will, <laughs> the, well, the computer system will do the drawing for us on that Monday, which I think- Yeah, I'm funny. assuming that's going to be too many names to like throw in a thing. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not doing anything. It's completely automated. We have no control. Um, but the we will announce the winner on our live on Wednesday, May 22nd. And you will get the machine. We will send it to you for free. You won't have to do anything. You just have to be over 21 and live in the U.S. Because that is what the laws require us to say. Um, so also, I'll leave it there. And if anyone has any questions, go ahead. Um, but I want to make sure that... Oh, you have both cameras up. Yep. So Let now I'm just placing second. the two back quarter cuts that I made, the 10 and a half by 15 inch right sides together. And then I left an opening, I mark them because I will sew all the way around this inevitably if I don't mark them. So I put two marks, leave an opening for turning. And I I made sure the ties were clipped inside of here so that they don't get caught anywhere as I go around here. So it's a half inch seam allowance is what the pattern says. So if you see me not with my press her foot right up against the edge it is because I'm doing that on purpose so I'm gonna back stitch here too oh I need to turn my stitch length back down because I had it for top stitching on the um the ties before so they were really long so I'm gonna back stitch to make sure it stays in place so here's a question for you for me yes for me because mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure all some of the stuff out. why what's the purpose of changing stitch 
So I change the stitch length higher when I'm doing a top stitch or when I'm quilting because I just think the longer stitches look nicer. When I'm sewing something together, I put them tighter so that like closer together so that it holds everything really well. Because if they're farther apart, like that seam along the edge here, holding the layers together, like they'll look, they won't be as tight. So the fabric, you'll see gaps between oh. it. Like, does that make sense? It does. I don't um, know if I'm explaining it well enough, but. Thank you, Carrie. We appreciate it. She said the new camera makes it easier to see what we're sewing. Or what you're sewing. I'm not sewing anything. Um, Today was probably not the best day to do a project that I kind of want to explain because we had so much stuff to like talk about. Yes. Um, Linda, want you have not sewn the pocket yet. No, no. Pencils. Um, it's actually pretty neat how the pocket comes together because I was super uh, confused about the process, but just trust it. Um, it'll be in just a minute. I'll show you how the pocket comes together. Oh, um, so another thing um, that we wanted to mention. I should have put it in there because it's not straight. Is. Um, Hopefully the sewing isn't as loud now too, because the the mic isn't as close. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another thing we wanted to mention was so so yeah, just had a retreat, and at, oh, the, yeah. re at the retreat they used um, two different models of Juki machines. The TL eighteen was one, and then I think the DX two thousand was the other. Um, but what they do with the machines that they use at the retreat. So this, these are machines that have been used for 20 to 30 hours, maybe not even that much. Um, those machines are for sale, but they are for sale. Um, they take all those retreat machines, they completely um, clean them out and oil them up and make sure they're perfectly fine. And then they sell those machines. Um, we can't say what the prices are because they're much lower than the than they're typically allowed to sell them for. So if you are interested in buying a machine that was used at one of their retreats, you can send them a text message. We actually bought one for ourselves. We bought a TL-18 for ourselves. We're giving one away that's brand new in the box, never been yeah, used. Yeah, that one is brand new, the one that we're giving away. But after looking into it, I really wanted it. <laughs> And uh, I was like, I can't justify this right now because, like, we have this machine that is still really good. I have a Bernina that I keep meaning to sell and stuff like that. But uh, the deal was so good that I was like, oh. <laughs> so um, if you're interested, uh, and I talked to, to T. Ingham yesterday, they still have some machines that they're selling. So if you are interested. So we can tell you it is less than retail price. Plus you get a, like a travel bag for it and a hundred fat quarters. So. Yeah. So you, yeah, you get the machine that is all cleaned up and ready to go. You get a hundred fat quarters and a bag for the machine. Um, so if you're interested, you can shoot them a text message because they can't say the price aloud. They can text it to you. Their text number is 702. 2804552 and I put it on a little ticker at the bottom of this video so hopefully you can see that. Um so give them a shout if you're interested in either one of those machines and they will be available to help you. All right, so I sewed all the way around and then um I'm using that opening to flip everything out and pushing out the corners to make sure I caught everything. Um, oh, so I need to turn my iron on. Andrea, you asked if I know how to turn on closed captions. So closed captions are done on YouTube's side. And I don't think they're generally available for lives because the algorithm, the AI system that YouTube uses, I think takes time to digest yeah. what we're saying and then spit it if out. We went live through, I think like uh, Zoom gives the option. I don't know if the new streaming thing we're using gives no, the option. No, it's just not an option in YouTube and I don't see one here either. So I apologize, but we don't have the ability to turn on closed captions. I'll see, I'll look into seeing if there's a way to set it up in, in YouTube that I've missed, but I don't think there's a way 
on there. Let me get. Amy, what kind of cameras are we using? Uh, we have yeah, both cameras are the same. They are Sony ZV E10 cameras. Um, so one is pointed at us, and the other one is pointed down at the workstation. Yeah, I, I apologize, Patty. I wish there was some way that we could do a giveaway that would be compliant with Canadian law, but I took a gander at it. And I have a buddy of mine um, that I went to law school with. I went to University of Michigan Law School. So we had a handful of people from Canada, as you may expect. Um, so I called a buddy of mine who is a Canadian lawyer. And he basically said, look, if you're an American company and you're trying to set up a giveaway in Canada, it's it's a bunch of red tape. And we've had enough issues. Uh, we initially had shipped our products to Canada, but we've had some issues with the CBSA, the Canadian Border Oh, I don't remember what the SA stands for. <laughs> but the people, it's their border patrol. Um, so I'm just very afraid of running afoul of Canadian laws and not crossing the T and then getting sued by the Canadian government, mm -hmm. um, which happens. Hey, Joyce, welcome to the show. Although I think I saw you earlier. Um, uh, Andrea, I will, I will definitely ask them and see. Sean has definitely helped me before with some of the the stuff he uses on his. Yes. Now I do know Andrea that Ian Beck, Ian and Becca for sure use a uh, particular streaming service for their videos, their lives, which we don't use. We tried, but we literally could not get it to work on any of our computers. <laughs> and their tech support was basically like, yeah, we can't help you. Uh, so I don't know if that's a feature of the streaming service they use or not, but we will do our Best. Yeah, I will definitely reach out to them and ask them. They're, I think, at QuiltCon already. Um, I don't know when it starts, but um, hopefully one of them can get back to me. I know they will be able to by the next live, and hopefully we can figure it out. Yes. Uh, Alexandra, we, uh, well, I'm not sewing anything. Um, <laughs> my wife is sewing um, pencil pouches Here you for... Can that uh, that the So Yeah Brothers will be donating on their mission trip. So um, they're, you know. So I pressed around it and I have the raw edge where I turned everything tucked in and I'm just gonna top stitch around it. So I'm gonna put the stitch length up again and just go all the way around. Um. Uh, stitch in time or Patty. oh, she was referring. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I know. I feel like they sent stuff to Canada. I could. I wrong. don't know honestly. I, I um, don't know for sure. I know on their lives it says, um, down in the description box that shipping for Canada is different for their like D stash and everything. But I don't know if they ship like machines and stuff. And I can't imagine what that would cost to ship though. Uh, Nancy, I completely agree. Uh, lawyers screw up every. <laughs> I, I'm a lawyer. I get it. I'm not a bad one. At least I don't think I am. So the the um sorry the ties here you want to keep them out away so don't tuck them in and sew over them. Hopefully you can see. So keep them out away when you top stitch around. Again, I think this would be really cute if you like to knit or crochet to put your knitting or crochet needles in. So I think it's a pretty versatile little pattern here. Yeah. Um, Let me know what you guys think of the, the, the diamond quilt I'm working on behind me. Um, yeah, we gotta get to that too. Yeah, so I've been working on that this week and that has been a lot of fun and we put together some templates for it to make it easier to cut all those. There are so many ads coming up and I changed that. Um, I haven't gotten an ad yet, which is weird. Um, but yeah, we changed the, so look, everyone, apparently we didn't know this, but we found out that YouTube is now Anytime you make a video, YouTube goes in and schedules ads without asking or telling you. I have to go in and take them all out, and it is extremely frustrating. Um, so we try to go in 
a, beforehand uh, and uh, remove change it. it. But the problem is YouTube just goes in and changes it again. Like we had a video that she put up last week and it was a, it's a what an hour long video and it had ads literally every three minutes. It was, it was insanity. Um, so here's how you get the pocket in it. You just turn this up. That's it. It's so, it's such a cute little way to bring this together. It says to turn it up four inches. So I'm just going to use this again to, um, to make sure. Oh, it's a good guess where it was. I'm going to see if, if it changed it. Um, I don't know if it did. I don't know if I can change it now, but I'm going to try and see if I can go back in and <laughs> do this again. Cause that is really annoying. All right. Where are my clips? They don't know. <laughs> All right. So I turned that the bottom up four inches and then you just stitch along the side. Well, I stitched along the sides and across the bottom just so it had top stitching there as well. But you really only need to stitch across the top, the, the sides um, for the pockets. But I'm going to go across the bottom too just to tack it in place. Okay. So I... I'm looking at the, the YouTube backend station and it shows that there are no additional ads set. So I don't know why. Oh, people aren't getting ads. So maybe it's just on mine for some reason. I keep seeing them pop up. No, Judy got two. Virginia got three. So it's just dependent? That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, everyone. Um, Lynn, Lynn, you're saying fuzzy. I, I don't know. The cameras don't look fuzzy on our end. Um, so yeah, I, I don't. It doesn't look on mine either. I apologize if that's affecting you. Uh, so these clips I got from Lauren Mar Marmino's website. Uh, she typically makes bags, and I thought they were really cute. <laughs> and so when I saw her showing them, I went ahead and grabbed some. I think her website is more me. So M O R E. M E and then K N O W.com. But she, last I looked on her website, she still has them um, on there for sale. I like them sometimes better than wonder clips because they are flatter when you're sewing across and they kind of hold across and hold more of the fabric too. I still have wonder clips and I use them as well because these are honestly a lot more expensive. So if I'm doing binding and want to clip them, it's a lot of these to purchase. But for something smaller like this, I like having them and they're really cute to look at. So it makes me happy. So Alexandra, yes, the white band that you see on here is elastic and yes. so that you can, I'll see if I can show you here. Um, I'm going to put this in my mouth. No, I'm not. <laughs> that here. But basically the, it's a last here, I have a pencil here that you could put in to show better. So that you can slide your pencil in. I can't remember if I backstitched, so I'm going to do it again just in case. So, sorry, I'm far away from the camera. But it is an elastic for the pencils. All right. So, um, now all I have to do is just sew um, straight little lines across here and... Joy, sorry, baby. Joyce wants to know what clips you were using. That's what I was just talking about, the Morbino oh. ones. Oh, sorry. I, I'm behind everyone, as, mm -hmm. as is almost always the case. <laughs> um. So to put the, like, dividers in, I'm going to actually switch to my walking foot uh, just because um, you're supposed to put them, where is it? I can't remember how five, five eighths of an inch to three quarters of an inch apart. And I don't want to mark all of the lines because I am lazy. So <laughs> I found that if I use my walking foot in conjunction with another ruler, I can get that those lines in without having to mark every single one of them. So that's what I always try to find like an easy way to make things work so I can just not have to work as hard to do something. Um, Karen says, do I sell replacement heads, heads for the seam rippers? Um, I don't 
Karen, because all of the heads I bought I used, but I can get you replacements if you need any. Um, or I can probably send you a link to where you can find some. Oops. Um, hopefully, um, you should need them. The, the ones that I sell are made out of sterling or not sterling um stainless you can't no, get it. it's not stainless steel it's um there you go some kind of silver i don't remember exactly it's like nickel coated silver so they should be relatively durable and shouldn't break but if you need any email me at info at soviet quilts and i can help you out um with that yeah they're just like hair clips they're just um like that fluorescent rainbow color so i thought they were really cute but you could probably just buy like silver or whatever color like cheap little haircut Um, um, so I need to get, I didn't bring my marking tool over here and I don't want to use the, the other one on that fabric. I've never tested it on there. Got it. Uh, yes, Amy, thank you for reminding me. I, we only have the microphone on one camera, so that was silly. Oh, you turned it. Nobody <laughs> could hear. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want to have both um, microphones on each camera active because we didn't want it there to be a reverb. But I didn't realize that by switching to the one camera, it would have taken the audio off. So now we know. <laughs> I will not do that again. So that was definitely our fault, and we we have no idea what we're doing. I'm gonna find the center just by folding it in half, and. I'm going to mark just the center line and then I'm going to use the walking foot to measure out the rest of them. Also, Luane, your comment about Olive Garden has made me hungry and now I'm <laughs> Olive Garden. I haven't had Olive Garden in a while and I love Olive Garden. So what I found on doing the test one that I did is that the elastic likes to move a lot and gets kind of wonky so last time i put some clips in to try to hold them in place or some pins i mean and i'm gonna try and do that again it just all went out of whack and i had to fix it and i may have to fix it again later because it's harder for me to to really focus when i'm when i'm sewing on here live so hopefully i can um Char this. charlene definitely not you um definitely my fault because i don't know how to use technology apparently so you y'all would not believe how long it took us to try to figure out how to set up on this new service where it's nice because we can put like words up on the screen and everything to um you know like remind you about the giveaway or do other stuff like i don't know did you use it to put in the number that they could use to try to get see if one of the machines is still available yeah so that part's nice to be able to do that but learning a new system's hard too yeah we do. <laughs> but like amy said just jump in you know feet first and try and figure it all out yeah i mean that's kind of what you have to do really even yeah. like it's the same with quilting and sewing and all that so i still have my stitch length up at three and i marked a line down the middle that's the only line i'm going to mark though because i'm lazy and the rest, I'm just going to wing it. I mean, the ones on this one look almost identical. So I think you're good. You're winging it. It's quite good. <laughs> well, it's just so much faster because if you mark all these, it's just, I mean, it really doesn't take that long, but, you know. Um. So where are, where'd they go? Oh, do you want to, hmm. I was going to go, oh, hold on. Um, Mona did what? What are you making? We are make, or we, <laughs> my wife, I like to take credit for everything she does. Uh, she is making pencil pouches, uh, based on the pattern that is available from So Yeah Quilting. Um, and these are pouches that they will send to them and then they will take with them on their mission trip to donate to the children 
so that they have somewhere to put their pencils. So this, this ruler's a quarter inch thick and it has a quarter inch line like around it. So I'm lining up that quarter inch line on the stitches that I just did. And then in conjunction with this, it's about a half an inch. So between the two, I get that three quarters of an inch that they recommend putting these apart uh, without marking everything. So I start just above the elastic and start sewing and I backstitch. <laughs> that is absolutely correct, Patty. the royal we. Anything that we do good is definitely we. And, and if I mess up, it's we. And if she messes up, it's her. So <laughs> I, uh, I have it all covered. But that means I made a bunch of stilettos and seam rippers and trays today, too. <laughs> so. <laughs> Touche. So one thing I guess that we can sort of talk about is if you all see back here, it's this really cool diamond pattern that my wife made and she asked me a couple days ago so, that um, so see i have one of the lines now together for where'd you put that pencil is it still oh i put it okay. <laughs> so then one of them is ready to go or if you wanted to use it like i said for anything else really but i think it's really cute all right so you want to show that block yeah there? so um Oh, here we go. <laughs> I forgot that it was here. Um, so what she did is, I'll wait till you're done sewing because it'll be easier for them to see it. On here? There. Yeah. Okay, let me do one more and then. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this, but. And if you guys want to see that diamond block come together, this will be finished up soon, and I can I can make one as well. It's really easy to sew. Sorry, so. Twyla. I, I I promise I literally just checked in YouTube studio and it shows that there are no ads that should yeah. be coming up. So I, I don't know because she just got a third ad. I don't YouTube know. Is, YouTube's just going crazy. So here's the block. There's four diamonds and then these like that's the the template I'm using here is the corner triangles i don't know what the border pieces yeah you called them a border piece so whatever it is so and then four of those but it makes such an adorable block i think it is so cute where's the the actual diamond one um oh it's under your machine <laughs> i thought i had them over here so there um so yeah she asked me my wife asked me to make her need a, a bigger table we do a template to make uh, diamonds. So I went ahead and it took me a while to figure out the dimensions and get everything oh, perfect. But now they are. I need that so I can cheat. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I should have grabbed because the same with the uh, the flying geese has a quarter inch around it, too. It does. I wouldn't try doing this with a thinner ruler. These are quarter inch. But um, if you have any like ruler templates for doing ruler quilting or anything like that, I think it would work fine too. But you just don't want like one of the thinner rulers to go under your needle and break. I mean, I can always make you like a, a quilt lock with quarter inch marking on it. Yeah. That would be very easy to do. Um, Alexandra, the pins that she is using are- They're, um, I think they're called magic pins and they might be linked in the description under like um my amazon link of of things that, that i like to use but they're magic pins and they're just the the ones with the flat head so they're ones that you can iron on and stuff where this stuff on the end doesn't melt i love them uh jill bowman chapel says she likes the green color of the templates so Jill, all we make all of our templates out of this. Uh, it's it's a fluorescent green material, is what it's called, um, and that's because this material reflects light the best. So when you're using it, and um, it, it, the light reflects through the edges, so that even in low light situations, if your eyesight's not great, you still are able to follow along very easily because the light 
um, radiates from it best. I don't know why I just threw the thread on the floor <laughs> instead of in the trash can that's right beside me. Because you're silly. I just really want a vacuum, I think. Um... Did anybody say if they want to see me put one of the diamond blocks together? Uh, I, not that my I've seen. thing but... timed out, so. Oh, no, we're good. Um... Oh, thank you, Jill. Jill said she has four of the different templates, and she loves them. Oh, awesome. I think, I mean, I'm partial, but I really like all of them. <laughs> um... Oh, okay. So a couple of people have said yes, they would like to see a diamond block. Okay. So you can do that after you finish this one. Now, how? So thank I guess you. I'm going to start at the bottom. Carla. So apparently, several people, not just Carla, but they like the new layout. So that's good. Oh, good. It took us a long time. So I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> just the other cameras that we have. It, they were really hard to get like angles that we wanted because they would only attach to these certain um, stands that we had and it made it a little difficult. So we finally upgraded and we're trying to be somewhat professional. We try, it's not. We're never going to be really professional, but... I know, like, if you're watching somebody so it's nice to actually see them working, so. Yeah. Um, oh, Maple Stitch is saying, yes, please. Also, um, I'm curious, Maple Stitch. We have been to Canada a couple times. We've, we've been all over. And and I don't want to start a fight. I definitely don't want to, <laughs> you know, mess up inter like international relations. <laughs> But the best maple syrup I have ever had was from a small batch place in Vermont. Now, to be fair, it was in, and I don't remember the name of the town, but it's it's basically like literally a stone throw from Montreal. So it's still American, but it was like right on the Canadian border. Um, what are your thoughts on maple syrup and what is the best maple syrup you have ever had? Is it, is it from Vermont or is there some place in Canada that I should get my maple syrup from? I'm very curious to know. That should lead into our questions of yes. what you're doing. Good. So I will get there. Um, Alexander said she really enjoyed your Argyle quilt tutorial. The, thank you so much. Because I was, uh, he, you, he can attest, I was so afraid to put that video up, not because I didn't think it was a good pattern or anything like that, just because of how long it was. But I had so many people comment on different tutorials I did saying that they wish, you know, that I showed um, how to base the quilt or how to put the binding on or, you know, any of those steps. And so I was like, well, I'll just on this video, I'm going to show everything. Um, so it was a very long video, but I've been getting a lot of good feedback on it. So I'm glad that I went ahead and put it up. And he told me, just, you know, you recorded all of it. So just put it up. If people don't want to watch it all, then they won't. So, um, yeah, but I had a lot. I mean, it was a lot of, of work, but that was a fun quilt pattern to do. So into our... Um, First question, so I can't see what is your favorite breakfast? Holy moly, I can't. <laughs> what is your favorite breakfast food? Um, and I put it up on the screen for everybody, so hopefully you can see it when it shows up. Oh, cool. Um, I so we were last night, and I think two of our questions are food related, but um. Last night, we were both very hungry when we were coming up with these questions. And um, so I went back and forth. I think my favorite um, is probably an Eggs Benedict dish. I, I really like crabs, like crab eggs, crabs, Benedict, whatever it is. Um, so I would probably go with like a crab Benedict. But I, I really do love like a really good fluffy um, pancake with maple syrup from Vermont. He likes really fluffy pancakes and I like really thin ones. So 
Um, we usually make waffles. <laughs> <laughs> um, My favorite breakfast food is probably a, I really love a good hash brown. Like, um, I, what is it called? Like, a, with hash browns with like everything piled on it, like a breakfast hash oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, like a hash. Um, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, Henry says that um, his friend lives in New Hampshire and they made maple syrup last fall that was delicious. And Jody anything said, that's fresh, probably. Vermont is her favorite, so she's on our side. Uh, Judy likes bacon as her favorite um, food. That's a good one. Um, I, I apologize. I may butcher your it name. It did get but... a little wonky, but that's okay. The I pinned it, but it got a little wonky. I think it's just with elastics going to move a little. But there we um, go. I need to clip all the threads. But got another one finished. I have one more cut out. I'll probably just do that tomorrow since some people wanted to see the diamond block, though. So Heike, and I apologize if I got your name wrong, but Heike said sausage and soft-boiled eggs. I love soft-boiled eggs. I'll put that over there with you, too. Twyla has crepes. Um, so, Danelle, you say fully loaded scrambled eggs. What does fully loaded mean to you? Like, what are we putting on those? Because I could get behind that. <laughs> um, Everything. Everything Jill, you can find in your, uh, your pantry. Jill Bowman Chapel's French toast. I love a good French toast. Oatmeal, bagel, pecan waffles. You must be from the South, Vicki. Um, Let me see. Pickled so, herring. Okay, that's a little outside my... My wheelhouse. One thing I will say with these templates for uh, the diamonds, since you're going to have that bias edge right there, I starch the heck out of it. Like it's basically feels like paper. Um, I put a link to what I used to, to starch this, but you want it really heavy. Um, it's called, I think it's pronounced ter Terial Magic. It's in the description. Um, it's expensive, so if you have something else that does a really heavy starch like this, um, use that. If you don't care if you get perfect points, sometimes I don't care, uh, so I get it. Uh, then just use whatever or don't starch if you don't want to, but just a pointer if you want it to turn out perfect. Uh, make your fabric basically paper. So I'm going, am I on screen? Yeah. Okay. What are you trying to do? I just want to cut these, but I want to make sure people can see what I'm oh, doing. Okay. So I'm going to cut the like corner triangles or the border first. So I cut these strips. I don't remember what I cut them to now, and I was going to mark it. Ooh, chocolate filled croissants. That's a good one, Charlotte. Um, so I don't know that I've ever had sourdough pancakes, Sylvia. I love sourdough, but I don't know if I'd want. I'd have, I guess I'd have to see. We've right? made them. They're really good. You don't remember when we had our starter? We've made sourdough pancakes and sourdough um, waffles, and they're delicious. Okay, so we, I've had them, and they're delicious. It, he he is really bad at remembering anything aside from work-related stuff. So um, we had a starter before we made them. I think it makes them taste kind of like like buttermilk pancake type thing. I believe you. So this is this strip is cut to three and a half inches. And I'm just going to line it up on here and cut. And I'm going to cut two with the fabric facing up and then two with the fabric facing down. Uh, I got Heike's name right. That, I, I will count to my German heritage, Heike. Um, I, I, if I had to guess, I would think that your name is Swedish, but I'm not going to, I don't know. Um, but a lot of those languages, uh, the words are pronounced similarly. Oh, thank you, Laura. I will try 50-50 with it, too, because it is so heavy, and I wonder if it would still be either way. So this uh, template that I'm using has grips on it. That's why you can see me moving the fabric around with it, and it, the grips just kind of hold it in place. It makes it a little easier for cutting it. Oh, and Quilt Fect is in the chat. So. Oh, thank you so much for your lovely uh, unboxing of the rulers that uh, you ordered. That was really sweet of you. Uh, okay. It's Debbie, right? Debbie? Yes. Yes. 
Um, so Danelle's fully loaded scrambled eggs. Well, thank are... you too, Donnell. I didn't know you were in the chat. Yeah. My thing keeps turning off. <laughs> um, we've got sauteed onions, green peppers, mushrooms, crumbled sausage, and melted cheese. I I'm going to be that. hungry. <laughs> I know. I'm already hungry. I need to change this out and lower this before I forget because I'm going to try and start sewing with this on. Let's see. Oh, okay, good. So Heike is German. Um, I don't know why it makes me think of a Swedish name, but uh, it just does. Um, oh, croque madames are really good, Maple Stitch. There's a, I used to work in downtown Houston, or my office used to be in downtown Houston. Um, and there's a little French restaurant just on the park there, and they make a really good um, croque madame, and it is delicious. I, I think breakfast, though, is my favorite meal of the day there's so many different foods i like so oh hi good started following you because or us she said y'all i'm gonna go with <laughs> us um as a result of your argyle tutorial so, thank you thank you also i can't tell but it looks like you have a really cool tattoo going on on your foot i can't is it a i don't want to guess and be wrong but is it a snake and stars or something it looks cool so i have two of these corner triangles cut and then i'm going to flip the fabric so the wrong side's facing up, and then I'm going to cut some from the other side. It's the sign of the Leo. Okay. Ooh, Nancy says she loves breakfast for supper. I do as well. That's like one of my... I Like when I was growing up as a kid, I always sort of felt that when you had breakfast for dinner, it was like a special event. It was a treat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, really, it's just because it's so damn easy to do. And it's just <laughs> yeah. lazy. Your parents yeah. were tired. <laughs> um, but no, I love breakfast for supper too. It's amazing. It, it really depends on what you make though, is for it to be easy. Yeah. I mean, that's true. But, but I mean, aside from like waffles and waffles aren't difficult to make, they just yeah. take forever. Most breakfast food is pretty straightforward. Yeah. At most, it's because you can just throw a bunch of stuff we, in a pan, and then you just call it a meal. Unless we talk you into making us crepes. <laughs> yeah, crepes. I love crepes. And my wife, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, bought me a crepe pan um, as a gift. And I was like, oh, this is the greatest gift. And then I realized it was a horrible <laughs> gift because then everyone wanted crepes every weekend, and it's not easy. Good night, Mona. Have a nice night. So this, I think this one is cut to three and a quarter and I cut it, I would get more out of this if I cut these like to the side this way. And if I do it that way, I cut the strip to three inches, but I wanted the hearts to go up and down on it. So I cut it a little wider so that I'm, I'm going to waste, uh, I'm going to waste fabric this way, but I really wanted those those hearts going up and down in the diamond. So it's sort of fussy cutting it. Um, sometimes to get a quilt the way you want it, you just have to waste fabric. And I apologize to anybody who is cringing over me wasting fabric, but uh, I just want it to look the way I want it to look. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to cut two diamonds from that heart heart and pink fabric and then um from the birds amy says it's not wasted fabric it's quilting overhead <laughs> i love that that's a good tax write-off too good stuff <laughs> um so nana juji i apologize if i've got your name wrong she says just found your channel yesterday i've been watching a few videos today what are the green rulers i'm brand new to quilting and they look like a great tool to have uh nana juji we make um, a bunch of quilting rulers and templates, and they're available for sale on our website. There's a bunch of different ones that are very useful and helpful. So if you, there's a link in the description of this video that should link to our website. You can take a look at them there. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at sobeitquilts.com, and we will be happy to answer any questions you might have. So I'm going to try to get the birds kind of centered in the diamond here. Um, I think I'm just going to cut. Sorry. I know y'all are all cringing at me and I apologize. Yeah, why are you trying to cut yourself? That's not what I meant, but no. you do cringe whenever I cut anything. <laughs> this piece I'm going to save because I can make something with 
that. Okay. But I want to try to get the birds in the center. And there's this little heart here. Hopefully I'm yeah, on camera. You can see it. So there's a little heart here that I'm going to put the handle on so that it's kind of centered. Because I didn't do that the first time I made the block that's buried under all this stuff. And I, when I realized that, I got one really good. Um, and the other birds kind of a little, they're kind of a little wonky. But when I realized that I could use the handle to really center it, then I got it a little better. So just a little, that little handle is right in the center and you can get it lined up a little better. Um, Nana Juji says, what would be a great one to start with? It really depends on what you're doing, Nana Juji. If you are working with half square triangles, then you'd probably want to buy a half square triangle trim lock. So it's like our original trim lock that's in uh, it. If you're doing flying geese, although if you're a beginner, you're probably not doing flying geese, but there's a trim lock for that. Um, I'd probably get like the, um, probably the, if you do, if you use a lot of charm packs, like the, the five inch squares, probably the four and a half or the five inch would probably be a really good one to start with. There you go. Those birds are just so cute. <laughs> um, this fabric just makes me so happy. Here, oh, save that no, one for me. I, sorry to hear that Auntie Handmade. She had a flood in her bathroom and ah. the company had to pull out the bathroom hallway and part of the bedroom floors and bathroom drywall. Um, That's... Um, do we have a large tray up here, babe? Um, No, because I have a small one that's piled oh. full of um, <laughs> Judy, give me two minutes. I've got one downstairs, so let me grab it, and I will be right back. I need a large one, though. Well, we've got a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, so this is the last dime, and then I can show you how the block comes together. It is, it is really a fun little block to sew. And like I said, if you starch the fabric and get it really, really um, papery feeling... I found that I don't get any stretches on the diamond where that bias normally is. And well, it's still there, but uh, the block comes together really easy. This, I don't know, you can pretty stiff now. So because when he cut these for me, I had him do the, um, what's it called? Like the- They're like my little corners. Yeah. Um, these come, they lay together really, really nicely so that, um, uh, you know, you get them lined up perfect. Should I do the birds the same way side by side, or should I put them like top and bottom this time? Should I keep them side by side? Oh, you can side by side. Oh, you mean like, yeah, do, you can rotate. Yeah. Do it different, differently. Do top and bottom. All right. So. Just lay them together and they line up really nicely because of those little notches or whatever you said they were. I can move this. Well, I don't it doesn't to. bother me there. It fits there fine. You're welcome, Judy. Um, but that's there was, we, we, I designed the small tray initially because that's what my wife asked me for. Um, and it, I made that small enough to fit in the throat of her machine. And then Becca from So Becca had asked me if I could put one together for her paper piecing, and it was obviously a little bit larger. But it's still, I think, I think it's six point seven five yeah, inches, six and three quarter inches you wide. Put it on the rule, the mat there. by four inches. It's why well, I know it is. Uh, <laughs> you made some today, didn't yeah. you? So it's six point seven five inches long and four inches wide. Is it possible to zoom in more on the needle? The answer is yes. Let me just get up and do that. And hopefully I don't mess anything up. Let's see. Let me turn my iron back on. Oops. Oh. I zoomed in, but now I've got to like move the camera a little bit. Uh, sorry, everyone. You're probably getting motion sickness. I think it's fine there. I'm going to do a little, oops. Sorry. Is that good? How's that look, babe? I think it's probably fine. I think it looks good. Okay. All right. I'll come back. 
Yeah, because I can't keep up with the chat and do this. So <laughs> we need you back. I'm back. All right, I'm going to press these. Sorry. Um, And so what I do to get the the center points lined up perfect, I under all this stuff I find the little quarter. You can use any quarter inch ruler that you have, but I put a little. I think I'm still on because you, since you moved, it, I don't really know where it's lined up. But hopefully you can see. I line up the quarter inch line along the edge, and I put a little dot right at the seam so that I know where the quarter inch seam allowance is. And then, so this is how it's lined up. The, the top one, I put the dot on the right side of the fabric. Then I flip the bottom one and I put the dot on the other side, right where the thread is. So just right, this is a friction pen, so it'll erase from the heat, but I just put a little dot there and I'll show you why. I really like that fabric. Where did you get it? Um, in one of Monique's boxes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I um so I love her boxes. I love all of the fabric that she sends, but this bird fabric, I just really wanted to use it for something else. And her patterns are great. Don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying what I'm doing because I'm talking about something else. So I just really envisioned this fabric for something else. And um, I wanted to use it on this because I thought fussy cutting it and keeping those. I know I'm cutting some of the birds off, but I still think it's really cute. So the side that is on the wrong side where I put the dot, I put the needle right through it and it's right out where the stitches are. And then I put the needle through where the dot is on the other side so that these seams will meet up. And you want it to kind of be straight, but before I close that pin off, I come to the other side and I'll put a pin in here and make sure it's lined up the angles with that are cut from the corners and everything and put a pin in. And then after I get that one lined up, then I'll close this one and put it all the way through. And I don't put one over here because I'm just going to start sewing over there. So sew my quarter inch seam and hopefully I get a nice point. Since I'm on camera, it probably won't be because <laughs> that's how things work out. But I found that that's the best way to get that point to line up. So Judy wants to know, is this her pattern or your pattern? Hmm? Um, so Judy, my wife sort of designed the block. She told me what size she wanted it to be. Oh, it did work out. Look at that. Hopefully nice. y'all can see. And so I'm just going to press this. Hopefully my iron's still on and didn't time out. Um, so she just told me what she wanted from the finished block size. And then we designed our designed the template to fit that. Um, but so, no, there's necessarily a pattern you're using for this, is there? No, I knew what I wanted the block to look like. I sketched it out, showed him, and I wanted it to finish at about five, 10 inches by five inches. So the block comes together at five and a half by 10 and a half. Um, but he did the templates for me and whatever program it is that he uses for the machine to cut them out for us. So in a sense, it's my pattern because I designed the block, but um, I haven't made a, like a, an official pattern with it or anything, just the block. But I do plan to, um, you know, write up a pattern for it so you know what size, how many blocks to make, if you want to make like a baby or a throw a twin, um, any of those. And I think when I write that up, I'm going to include paper templates. So it's because I know not everybody wants to buy these kind of templates. So paper templates will be available in that when I get it finished. Um, Alexander says, will it not line up with the notched ends? Yeah, it lines up. But I, I put the pin in there for that point just to make sure that that doesn't shift or anything just so that that point stays perfect. You could just line it up end to end. And so across there, put pins in without doing all those steps I do. I just do that to make sure that pin, that point is perfect every time. Um, so Laura asked, and this is for me, is it possible to put holes in the diamond template where the quarter inch comes together in the corners? 
So where is the diamond template, the, that one? I'm not sure what. Can you put it there? Um, so are you asking for... Like hanging it? Yeah. I mean, I can do anything. Um, Laura, I just, I would need to understand, do you need it in all four corners? Um, and what would the purpose be? But yeah, I can put holes in anything. So here, like, it fits from corner to corner, and I don't put pins in. Um, I just hold it in place. But for that that center point, I do it that way just to make sure I get all those intersections coming together and making a perfect point there. Oh, so uh, holes for marking, so they just so they can mark the points. I guess. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be easy. I could put. Now, the only thing to remember is. Yeah, I like how because it's so thick, how how big the hole would need to be to fit a um, pin through there. Yeah, so these are remember that these are it's the same acrylic that we use for all of our products, so it's a quarter inch thick. So I can put a hole in here, but the issue might be that you would probably need a mechanical pencil or yeah something like that because I wouldn't want to make the hole so large that you get lost on where the the actual center is. And if you wanted to use like a marking pencil, it would probably need to be so big that it would be you you wouldn't necessarily be hitting the exact center every time. Um, but I can I can definitely do that. Um, it would just take a couple bits of programming to do that. But I yeah, we can, can test it to sure. see um, to see how big it needs to be for something to fit through and um, and do that. But um, yeah, that's I don't think a regular pencil would unless we made it pretty big. Yeah, if you had a mechanical pencil, I think it would work. You just have to not break your lead because. Every mechanical pencil I've ever had, like if you get the lead out more than just a little bit, it breaks. Oh, well, happy birthday, Joyce. She just got back from her birthday. Well, she said from birthday dinner, so it may not have been hers, but if it was yours, Joyce, happy birthday. <laughs> yes, happy birthday. Um, Heike says, your blocks are beautiful. Yes, this is such a cool, pretty fabric. She have done this for like Valentine's Day. That's what the fabric was for. Yeah. Well, there you go. I knew it. <laughs> press this. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. We've got like two more questions that we haven't even gotten to. Um, so we'll go to the next one. So, so there is. Ooh, that nice. block. It's so cute. I, so I am not, I don't know how to say this without it sounding mean. And it, it definitely is not meant in a mean way. I'm not the hugest fan of like Tula Pink and all the big designs that she has sometimes. But uh, the more I've started getting different subscription boxes and tried out more fabric. I definitely appreciate that bright, bold fabric more than I used to when I first started quilting. But I think some of her fabric lines would look so fun in this block. Because it to me, it has more of a modern feel if you're looking at it here. Then if you're using fabric like this, then it kind of goes away from the like modern feel it to me. Um, but I think it would look so cool with some tulip pink. I feel like I need to get some tulip pink fabric now just to make that. <laughs> um, so our second question, and we'll probably get through the other two very fast, uh, but what is your favorite weekend activity? Um, sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like on the weekend because usually in the morning I go for a walk. You should flip it to just us because I'm probably not going to sew anymore okay. after this one. Um, but uh, usually Monday through Friday, I go through for a morning walk. And then after that, it's like work, work, work and everything. But on the weekend, I love to get up and make some tea and just kind of la like have some time where I finally just get to lounge for a little bit and, and not do anything, either read 
if it's Saturday morning, that's the one live I almost always religiously can catch is Sean's because he's on in the morning and everybody else is still sleeping and I don't have anything I have to do. Uh, Rebel Row says sleep. That's yeah, sleeping in. Um, so I think board games though, like we board like games. we don't have a lot to do. Playing board games is really fun. I think my favorite is yeah. I can't think i i so we work seven days a week yeah. <laughs> so i work on the weekends just as, maybe not as much but i like waking up in the morning and knowing that i don't have to go straight to work i can take some time because i'll work six or seven hours on saturday instead of you know 10 or 11 during the week but it gives me more time I, it gives i just like waking up knowing that hey I don't have to be in the office or in the shop all day. I can spend time playing video or not video games, board games, or, you know, we'll watch some soccer on TV or we'll go to a soccer game or something like that. But, but I, I like the idea that it's not a work day. I think that's probably my favorite. Now let me go ahead and clip these. Yeah. PJ weekend. Yeah. Oh, see, that's one. I miss Laura. So when we lived in Michigan, we would go to all of the farmer's markets because they have great farmer's markets where we lived. Um, but they don't really have any here. We, there's one in the, the next town over, which is also a small town, but it's not your traditional farmer's market that we're used to. It's not a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. It's a lot of prepared foods and things of that nature. So not not the same because when we lived in Ann Arbor, we could go down to Carytown and you can get the, literally really the good. most fresh vegetables and fruits that you can imagine. And they're so good. Um, so. <laughs> Ellen Parker, I like that. She said she's rocking retirement. So weekends are just another day. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of retired people chiming in with their uh, stuff. Uh, We're all jealous. Yeah. But so hold on, Amy. You're so yes, I'm with you. I'm in PJs all weekend long if I can be in PJs. Um how did your husband vote for no PJs? What's that about? Like what do you even wear on the weekends if you're not wearing PJs? Like if I, I, if I, I would buy out, I would buy PJs and not call him. Like, no, this is this is my your afternoon <laughs> <laughs> and just they're not gonna have the PJ name to them then. That's funny. Um all right, so tomorrow I need to make this other pouch and then we need to ship these off to so yeah. Okay. And our final question. And of course a lot of people said sewing, which I totally get. I think I clipped them on this. No, I didn't clip all of them. So the final question is, what is a non-sewing or quilting goal you have for this year? We all obviously have sewing and quilting goals. Do you? I do. Um, but what is a non-sewing or quilting goal you have for this? I have some books I want to read. I have not found a lot of time to read so far this year. So I have some books that I bought that I want to, to get to and read. Last year, so I try to read at least a book a month. Um, I used to be able to read a book a week. I don't have time to now, but I love to read. And last year, I think I read 30 books. So not too bad. That's but I haven't read bad. any yet this year. That's not true. I have listened to some audio books. And I still count those. But it's still different. I love to just be able to sit and actually read a book. Oh, uh, I think for me... Man, I should have... I knew what the question was. And I didn't give it Yeah, you told them all to me this time. Uh, <laughs> you picked at me last time when I picked them and didn't have anything prepared. Ooh, a new flower bed. Designing a new flower bed. That's right. Travel. Siberian Wind is getting a photography project done and then getting it into a museum. That's awesome. Amy, enjoy dinner. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, ooh, surprise your sister in Montana for Christmas. That would be fun. I like that. 
Oh, so Terry says she likes restoring vintage machines and has done a few. That'll be fun. Ah, that I need that. Well, that I need to. Yeah, I need to do right that now. one. Um, decluttering the house. Don't bring that kind of negativity in here. I need to do that too. Yeah, that's sort of what I think. I, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that I want to do that. We rearrange do. and mm -hmm. we do need to do that on. for sure. Um. Yeah, decluttering. We've got so much stuff that we don't use anymore that's been in boxes since we've lived here. We just need to donate it and get rid of it. And then, I mean, even though we have stuff in areas that we never go into, like we one of the garages or or in the attic, it's like knowing that it's not there anymore, I think yeah. would be great. Um, making items out of resin. I love working with resin. Um, yeah, I do it mostly in wood um... stuff. You made some cool coasters that had yep. resin accent in them. It did. It's just it's it takes so long. To, the resin that I use for the wood products I make, or it's it's a three day cure, and so it just takes forever. And and you have to kind of like keep an eye on it the first bit of time, right? Yeah. To make sure that I've got to blow bubble. torch it to make yeah. there's no bubbles. And if you're doing anything that's really deep, you've got to do multiple layers. So I mean, it's it looks really cool. It's just it takes so long. Like I want to be done. I don't want to have to. Take so, what do long. you make with resin, like maple stitch? What do you, what do you plan? Because I know there's so many different items. I like, I know you like watching them too, like some of those short videos that are time lapse where people layer it and put all those different designs in them. Yeah, things. yeah. There's like you can make jewelry with them. You can make like little shadow boxes. There's a lot of cool stuff people do with it. Um. You know, make memoirs. You can take like roses or coins oh, or yeah. stamps and put them in roses. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. So Auntie L wants to move her sewing room downstairs and my guest room upstairs. Oh, that sounds like a big task. That's a Definitely lot. Definitely get some help. Definitely get some help. Is the is the room is the space you have downstairs larger? Is that why you want to move your sewing room down there, or is it just out of convenience? I think I would like the space to be downstairs because of all the stuff we have to carry up and oh, down. It would be so nice if it was downstairs. So Maple Stitch makes candle holders, coasters, etc. That's really cool. Resin. <laughs> Luane, just to make it through another year. I hear you. Ugh. Yep. And be able to keep up with inflation and buy oh, food. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, everyone, it was, it's great. Uh, it's been great. Had a good time. Um, remember, if you are interested in one of the retreat machines that um, that Soya has, at least they had yesterday when I talked to them, uh, you can text the number on the screen and they will give you pricing. Um, they're basically brand new machines that were just used at the retreat. They go in and they clean them all up and get them all nice and pretty. And if you buy one of those machines, you get the machine plus a hundred fat quarters and a bag. Like a travel type bag for it. Yeah. So you get all that and it's less than retail. Uh, so I think it's a really, really awesome deal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to, I'm hungry, so I guess I'm going <laughs> yeah, to eat, um, but hope you all have a wonderful evening, and mm, Join us will, back here next yeah. week at the same time, and hopefully um, we'll be more organized. Yeah. Well, now we know how to do everything, so it should yes. be. So have a good evening, Ooh, and we'll see me. you back here next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.